Chapter 7 in its entirety, including lessons, questions and answers, and explanations. This is, again, Chapter 7 from Electricity and Electronics, the text by Garish, Duggar, and Roberts, 10th edition, edited, explained, and narrated by Hector Bello. Chapter 7 is Parallel Circuits. The objectives for this chapter are to determine the total resistance of a parallel circuit, to determine the total, the excuse me, determine the voltage drop in par, in a parallel circuit, to determine the current values of a parallel circuit, to determine the wattage values of a parallel circuit, to apply Ohm's law to solve for unknown voltage, current and resistance in a parallel circuit, to apply parallel circuit theory to assist in troubleshooting in a parallel circuit. The keywords for this chapter include branch circuits or branch currents, mainline current, the reciprocal, the Kirchhoff's current law, parallel circuit. 7.1 Parallel Circuit Principles In simple terms, a parallel circuit provides two or more paths for electron flow through a circuit. Look at figure 7-1 on your screen. Take note of how each of the three resistors are connected to the source with each electron flow path independent of the other. When three resistors are connected in series and one resistor is removed, the entire circuit appears to be dead and the electrons cease to flow. There is no complete path for current. If the same three resistors are connected in parallel, one of the resistors can be removed from the circuit without stopping the flow of electrons in the circuit. This unique condition of the parallel circuit is the basis of the first parallel circuit formula that we will study. The parallel Circuit voltage. The voltage in a parallel circuit is equal to the source voltage of two or more components are connected. If two or more components are connected to the source in parallel, the voltage drop across each component is equal to the source voltage representing the voltage condition of a parallel circuit in words is the total voltage is equal to any individual voltage drop in the parallel circuit. The formula could be written as shown where n is the total number of voltages that is E total or voltage total equals voltage 1, voltage 2, voltage 3 and so on. In figure Dash two. There are three resistors connected in parallel. A six volt source is connected to the circuit. Each resistor has a full voltage potential applied across it. Each resistor voltage is equal to the source voltage. Parallel circuit current. Current in a parallel circuit follows some simple principles. These principles are summed up in the Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current law states that the algebraic sum of all currents entering any point will equal the sum of all currents leaving that point. Simply stated, the current flowing into a junction of parallel resistance is equal to the current flowing out of the same junction. This leads to the conclusion that the total current in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the individual currents caused by each individual resistance. The individual currents called branch currents, the total current, the individual currents are called branch currents. The total current is called mainline current. This is shown in figure 7-3. 
since the total current in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the branch currents caused by each individual resistance, the formula can be written as seen on the screen, where n is the total number of currents. Work through the circuit shown in figure 7-3. You can see that the sum total of the three individual resistor currents equal the total source currents of 9 amperes. Parallel circuit resistance. When resistors are connected in parallel, the total resistance of the parallel circuit is always less than the smallest resistance in the parallel group. Again, when resistors are connected in parallel, the total resistance of the parallel circuit is always less than the smallest resistance in the parallel group. In, order, in other words, if a 6 ohm and a 4 ohm resistor are connected in parallel, the total resistance will be less than 4 ohms. This principle is extremely important and should be memorized. There are several methods to determine the total resistance of a parallel circuit. These methods include the product over the sum method, the reciprocal method, the equal resistances method, and the graph method. The product over the sum method, shown on your screen, is used as a quick way to solve for the total resistance when there are two resistances of an equal value connected in parallel. The product over the sum method der derives its name from the mathematical terms used in the formula. The product is the term used for the answer to a multiplication problem, and the term is the term sum is used for the answer to an addition question. The formula for this method is written as shown. Follow the equation in figure 7-4. A 3 ohm and a 6 ohm resistor are connected in parallel. The total resistance for the circuit is 2 ohms. The reciprocal method. The reciprocal method can be used to find the total circuit resistance when there are three or more resistances connected in parallel. The reciprocal method gets its name because the reciprocal of the resistance values is used in finding the total resistance. A reciprocal of a number is equal to 1 divided by that number. For example, the reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2 or 1 divided 2. The reciprocal of 3 fourths is 1 divided 3 fourths or 4 over 3. The formula used for the reciprocal method is shown, where n the total number of resistances. Notice that when using the reciprocal method, each resistance value is expressed as a fraction. The resistance value is reciprocal. The number 1 is the numerator for the fraction, and the value of individual resistance is the denominator. Figure 7-5 has a 4 ohm and a 6 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor connected in parallel. Since the values are expressed as fractions, a common denominator must be found. Then the values can be added together. This problem, the common denominator is 12. For this problem, the total resistance is equal to 6 over 12. The 6 over 12 is the reciprocal of the total resistance. The fraction is inverted and 12 is then divided by 6 to find the total resistance. That's to find the total resistance of the 2 ohms. The total resistance value of 2 ohms or 6 divided 12, the reciprocal is 12 divided 6 which equals to 2 and that's your total resistance. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, most circuits do not have resistance values that lend themselves as neatly as our example to using this method of solution. However, the reciprocal method can be used in these messy situations. The reciprocal method 
can be used in these messy situations by converting the individual values to decimals. In figure 7 as 6 as shown, resistors of 35, 18, and 7 ohms are connected in parallel. The problem is set up exactly as before, but we simply use a calculator to convert each fraction into a decimal number so that they can be added together easily. The three resistor values total to 0.2271. The combined total of the three individual resistances is the reciprocal of the total resistance value of the circuit. The total resistance is equal to 1 divided by 0.2271 or 4.4. Equal resistances methods. When a parallel circuit consists of two or more resistor of two or more resistors of equal value, the total resistance is equal to the value of any resistor divided by the total number of equal resistors in that parallel circuit. The formula is shown on the screen where n is equal to the total number of resistances. In figure 7-7, seven -seven, the three 12 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. The total resistance for the circuit in figure 7-7 seven -seven is 4 ohms, or 12 ohms divided 3 equals 4 ohms. Note that the equal resistances method can be used in combination with other methods to simplify calculations. If any number of resistors are of an equal value, but not all of them, the equal resistances method can be used to produce an equivalent resistance from the equal value resistors. For example, you have a circuit with 10 resistors. In parallel, 8 of the resistors have a value of 80. The other resistors have values of 20 and 40. How do you find the resistance? Rather than having to total resistance equation for 10 reciprocals, the eight like valued resistors can be turned into one equivalent resistance. 80 ohms divided by eight produces an equivalent resistance of eight, uh, 10 ohms. Now add the two together. Add the two other resistors to your equivalent resistance using the reciprocal formula. The graph method is an interesting method of estimating the value of total resistance. The values of two resistances are expressed on a bar graph like the one shown in figure 7-8. A line is then drawn from the base of the first resistance to the top of the second resistance. A second line is then drawn from the base of the second resistance to the top of the first resistance, making a crisscross. The total resistance value of these resistances may be read where the two lines intersect. A third resistance may be added and the process repeated. This method is not, it's not considered to be very accurate, but it is a quick and easy method to check your work. Power in a parallel circuit. The total power consumed in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of all of the individual powers in the circuit. The formula is written as shown on the screen, where n is the total number of powers. In figure 7-9, you can see that the total power connect consumed is 72 watts is equal to the sum of the, to the total is equal to the sum total of the individual electrical power units such as R1, resistance 1 equals 12, 12 watts, R2 equals 32 watts, R3 equals 24 watts, consumed at each resistance. And now we'll review questions for section 7.1. First question, if the source voltage in a parallel circuit is equal to 10, 10 volts, what is the voltage drop across that resistor R3? Assume that R3 is equal to 50 ohms. For that, we draw the circuit over on the right side of your screen. 
Question uh, number one. Answer for question one. Where the total voltage is 10 volts, and we know one of the resistor's value is R3 equals to 50 ohms. So since the voltage drop at each resistor must be the same throughout the series circuit resistors, then total voltage drop equals N and R3 voltage drop equals 10 since they must be the same. So we can use that to find out what the voltage is at R3 and we know that it's 10 volts. Question number two, a circuit containing three resistors in a parallel has a branch current of has branch current of 3 amps, 5 amps, and 10 amps. What is the main line current in the circuit? Remember, the main line current is the total current. So, using the uh, formula for parallel circuit current, where current total equals current number 1, current number 2, and current number 3, meaning at each branch, then we can add what we have already been shown, 3 amps, 5 amps, and 10 amps, which equals 18 amps for current total or mainline current. Three list three formulas that can be used to find the resistance in a parallel circuit. And the formulas are shown on the screen. Number three on the right side where resistance total equals resistance one times resistance two divided by resistance one plus resistance two. This is the, the product over the sum formula for two resistances only. If you have more than two resistances of different values, you can use the, third, the second formula, which is the reciprocal formula for resistance or 1 over R total equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, etc. If you have two equally valued resistances or, or more than two equally valued resistances, you can use the resistance formula, the third one shown, which is resistance total equals to resistance divided by n or the number of resistance values. Remember, these have to be equal. doesn't matter how many, but they have to be all the same. Question four, what formula for finding the total resistance in a parallel circuit will work with any number of resistance values or any number of resistors? And that would be the reciprocal of resistances formula shown in number four on the right side. Question five, a parallel circuit has two resistors. Each consumes six watts. Calculate the total power for the circuit. So if you have two resistors in parallel and they both consume each six watts, we're talking about power. We have the power formula which power total equals power at resistor one, power plus power at resistor two, etc. So we simply add six plus six watts, which equals to 12 watts. 7.2, applications and troubleshooting parallel circuits. Parallel circuits are found in the home and industry alike. They allow the remaining bulbs and strings of lights to stay lit when one bulb burns out and they allowed for computers to work on many parts of a problem at one time. Applying Ohm's law to parallel circuits. Ohm's law can be applied to the individual components of a parallel circuit to find unknown values such as current. The total circuit resistance in a parallel circuit is always equal to the source voltage divided by the sum total of the individual resistor currents. An example is shown in figure 7-10. You can see that the total of the individual circuit currents 
or current one plus current two plus current three equals to six amperes. The source voltage for of 12 volts is divided by the six amperes. The total resistance is found to be two ohms. Troubleshooting a parallel circuit. A parallel circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit. Second voltage drop is not a very practical method for finding a bad component. One method of finding a problem is by comparing a total resistance reading taken with an ohmmeter to the calculated total resistance value. Looking at figure 7-11, we can see that the total resistance value of the ohmmeter is 12, excuse me, 20 ohms. We can see it's 20 ohms. The calculated resistance value is 10 ohms or 20 ohms divided 2. Using a little deduction, we can determine that one of the resistors is open. If one of the resistors was shorted, it would cause the fuse to blow. Another method of troubleshooting uses current readings taken at each resistor location. First, the total current for the circuit is calculated. Then this value is verified with an ammeter. See figure 7S12 using an ammeter. A current reading can be taken across an open switch. This reading is then compared to the calculated total current. An open resistor would draw no current, while a good resistor would. In figure 7-13, troubleshooting a parallel circuit will become easier as we learn more about the current, voltage, and resistance characteristics. One factor that assists us in determining the best method to troubleshooting a circuit is determining how the circuit has been assembled. When a breadboard is used to construct circuits, troubleshooting is much easier than when the components are sol soldered in place and must and we must find first find or we must first desolder to take the readings. In addition, desoldering components can damage them, giving the technician an even more difficult troubleshooting problem. The technician may believe the problem has been located and corrected only to find another defective component. Unfortunately, the additional defective component may have been damaged while desoldering the component in order to obtain a meter reading. And now review questions for section 7.2. A parallel circuit consists of three resistors. All three resistors are 20 ohms. If the current through the third resistor is 7 amps, what is the source voltage? And we work that problem out on the right side, number one. We draw out the circuit. We have three 20 ohm resistors and we know resistor number three has seven amps and since the voltage total equals to voltage one equals to voltage two equals to voltage three that is at each resistor point then uh, voltage drop at resistor three equals the voltage total this is for a parallel circuit so to find voltage drop at resistor three voltage drop at resistor 3 equals to the volt, uh, the current at resistor 3 times the resistance at number 3. Remember this is the Ohm's law formula just with slightly different uh, designator for resistor number. So it's simply voltage times uh, it's simply voltage equals current times resistance. In this case, 7 amps that we are given times 20 ohms equals to 140. So resistance uh, voltage total equals to 140 volts. Number two, second voltage drop. Second voltage drops is in fill in the blank method. Of troubleshooting a parallel circuit and we are shown the answer on the right side is it an, is an impractical 
method for troubleshooting the parallel circuit. In summary, a parallel circuit provides more than one path for current to flow. A parallel circuit in a parallel circuit, the voltage is equal throughout the circuit, like voltage total equals to voltage one, volt equals to voltage two, equals to voltage three, etc. Kirchhoff's current law states that the total current entering a junction or parallel circuit is equal to the current leaving that junction or parallel circuit. The total circuit current value in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the individual current values. Same as current total equals to current 1 plus current 2 plus current 3 and so on. The total current resistance is always less than the smallest resistance value in the parallel circuit. That's an important point to remember. And the total power consumed in the circuit is equal to the sum of the individual power consumptions like power total equals to power 1 plus power 2 plus power 3 plus power whatever whatever number of power uh, calculations or points. Remember power is always measured in watts. See knowledge questions. We'll work these out. Number one, what is the total circuit resistance of a 2 ohm? excuse me, of a two 10 ohm resistors connected in parallel. And we work that out on the right side. We simply use the formula of two equally valued resistors. Remember, it could be more than two, but in this case, there are two 10 ohm resistors. So resistance, resistance total equals two R divided N. So we have 10 ohms divided 2 equals to 5 ohms. Resistance total equals 5 ohms. Two, what is the total resistance of a 12 ohm and a 8 ohm resistor connected in parallel? On the right side, lower left, we have we have to use the formula, the sum over the the product over the sum formula for resistance. So we have 12 times 8 divided by 12 plus 8 which gives us 96 divided 20 or simplified to 24 divided 5 which is 4.8 ohms and this is because we have two different resistances we have to use that formula the product of the sum formula for resistance number three solve for their known values in the parallel circuit below we have a circuit with a 90 volts total voltage or source voltage. Remember, a, in, pa in a parallel circuit, the source voltage does not equal each individual branch voltage. It does equal, excuse me, uh, each equal branch's voltage. So your voltage total equals to your voltage drop at branch one voltage drop at branch two, voltage drop at branch three. So they equal each branch voltage drop equals total voltage. That's a good point to remember. So working out the problem, we start at the top right of the screen to find our resistances, which we are shown our resistances. But we need to find our resistance total. And we for that, we use the reciprocal method, the reciprocal formula method for resistance. And that is 1 over RT equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. In this case, we have 1 over 15, 15 ohms on R1. We plug that in we, on the, as, a re, as a reciprocal uh, fraction plus 1 over 6, 6 ohms, we take that from R2, plus 1 over 10, 10 ohms, we take, take that from R3, which gives us 2 over 30 
plus 5 over 30 plus 3 over 30. That's the least common denominator shown again on step 3. Top right of your screen, which gives us a total of 10 over 30, which is simplified by 1 over, th one over 3 or 1 third. So that can simplify further since we have to take the reciprocal of that 3 over 1, which is 3 ohms. To find our current total is another value that we do not do not have, are not given in the circuit. We use the formula for uh, parallel current total, which is current 1 plus current 2 plus current 3, etc. And since the current total equals to the current at R1, Excuse me, the, we have to, we are given to find our current total, we must find the current at each resistor. So we begin with resistor one or IR1, as shown on your screen, right side, lower left, lower right. So IR1 or current at R1 equals to voltage at R1 or ER1 divided by resistance number one. And that would be 90 volts divided 15. Now, where do we get our 90 volts for the voltage drop at resistor one? We know that 90 volts is our source voltage and it must be the same at resistor one or resistor three or resistor two for that matter. So we know that 90 volts is our resistor voltage drop. Divide that by 15 ohms, which we already know from the problem at R1. So that gives us six amps for the current at R1. Moving on to current at R2, we have our voltage drop at R2 divided by R2 resistance, which is 90 divided six, which, which gives us 15 amps. So the current drop, the current, excuse me, the current at R2, current flow at R2 at 15 amps. Moving on to current at R3. Voltage is 90 volts divided the, uh, the resistance at R3. We have 90 volts for that also. Our resistance is given as 10. So 90 divided 10 is equal to 9 amps at the current flow at R3. Now we have to, now we have our I total, which is I total equals to resistor one, uh, excuse me, amperage or current flow at resistor one, current flow at resistor two, current flow at resistor three. And we have all of those three. We just got those, which are six, 15 and nine. Add those up, you get 30 amps. Next, we move on to your power total, and it's simply power number one plus power two plus power three. To find our power at one, we simply multiply our power drop or voltage drop times our current at resistor one. And we have those two values, 90 volts and six amps multiplied, get those 200, uh, 540 watts. For power number two, we have 90 times 15 amps, 90 volts times 15 amps, that's 1350 watts, 1350 watts. At P3, again, power drop or, or voltage drop at resistor three times the current flow at resistor, resistor three, which is 90 volts times nine amps or 810 watts. And again, down below we show that there is a 90 volt drop at each resistor location. To 
solve for number four, problem four. We follow a similar step. We take what we're given and we use that to plug into whatever formula we, we, we deem necessary to solve for the problem. So we begin with current, excuse me, with resistance total. And for the resistance total, we have to use the reciprocal formula for resistance because we have different resistance values. We're given three resistance across a parallel circuit. And instead of voltage, this time we're given total current circuit or mainline current. which is 3 amps. Okay, and in a, what we know is that voltage, total voltage, should be the same across each branch of the parallel circuit. And total current should be additive, or it adds at each uh, branch of the circuit, each branch of the circuit added together. It gave us our total current. So for right now, we'll go with Step one, we keep finding our current, uh, our uh, resistance total, which in this case is, we write it as one over 30, 30 ohms. We, we're given that at R1 plus one over 15, 15 ohms. We're given that at R2 plus one over 10, 10 ohms. We're given that at R3. We add those, we find the least common denominator of 30 and we come up with 6 over 30 which is simplified to 1 over 5 or 1 fifth which is further simplified remember you have to flip the reciprocal 5 over 1 or 5 ohms to find our voltage total we simply use ohms law which is voltage equals 2 current times resistance in this case voltage total equals to current total times resistance total we know our resistance total we just got that five ohms we know our current total we're given that in the problem which is three amps so we multiply three amps times five ohms which gives us our current uh, our voltage total excuse me of 15 volts Further, we need the power total. That's the third requirement from our problem. To work that out, we simply use the power formula or the power equation, which is power equals current times voltage, or power total equals current total times voltage total. And in this case, we already know both the current total and the voltage total. 3 times 15 equals 40, 45 watts. Or 3 amps times 15 volts equals 45 watts. To find our current at R1, we don't have that just yet. They're not given to they're not giving it to us in our problem. However, we know the voltage at R1. Remember the voltage is the same across each of the resistors in a in a uh, parallel circuit. So we know the voltage drop at R1. We know our voltage total, which is 15. So we plug it in and we, we know our resistance value that's given to us. So 15 volts divided 30, which you have to use the, the Ohm's law formula, Ohm's law equation for, to solve for current, which is, uh, which is current equals voltage divided the resistance or current 
at R1 equals to voltage drop at R1 divided the resistance value at R1, which in this case is 15 volts divided 30 ohms, 4.5 amps. Same steps taken at current at R2, which is voltage drop at R2 divided resistance at R2, which again is 15 volts divided by, in this case, 15 ohms, which is given in the problem, equals to 1 amp. Same steps are taken for the current at R3, which is power drop at R3 divided by resistance at R at R3, which is 15 volts divided 10 ohms, which is 1.5 amps. For question number five, in a parallel circuit containing a 4 ohm, a 5 ohm, and a 6 ohm resistor, the current flow is, it's already marked, the highest through for the 4 ohm resistor. And we work that problem out just to verify it. We draw out the circuit. We have a parallel circuit with three resistors, R1, R2, R3. R1 is 4 ohms, R2 is 5 ohms, R3 is 6 ohms. We have a 10 volt total voltage or source voltage. And we plug in 10 just to test. We did not know the voltage at the source, but we put in 10 just to test out our theory that the highest current goes through the lowest value resistance. And for the current at R1, we plug in the voltage drop at R1 divided by the resistance at R1, this is just simply the Ohm's law formula, Ohm's law equation. So 10 volts divided. Remember, the voltage is the same at each resistance location on a on a uh, parallel circuit, the same as your source. So we know it's 10 volt at R1 divided by 4 ohms. We're given that. So we get 2.5 amps of current at R1. Let's plug in the same 10 volts at the voltage drop at R2 to get the current at R2. So 10 volts divided by 5 ohms equals to 2 amps. So we have a higher, higher value resistor at R2 and we get a lower current of 2 amps have a lower value resistor at R1, 4 ohms, yet we get a higher amperage, slightly higher current at R1, 2.5 amps. So that proves and shows us that the lower the resistor value, as long as your voltage source remains the same, the lower the resistor value, the more amperage you can push or pull through that resistor. And that is the end of the chapter, chapter seven. Thank you very much.